Join God's servant, Rev. Dr. William Okoye on Choose Life, a program of All Christians Fellowship Mission, every Sunday at 2 p.m. for balanced and transforming messages that will impact your life positively. Be grounded in wisdom and truth. Choose life. That's before and what you are now. going on today? Living that heaven dying. is weeping. Blessing Why men are clapping and jumping? And no, the time has come. Man alive. shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mercy. mouth of God. Welcome to Choose Life, a program of All Christians Fellowship Mission. Caring Church, raising Christ-like disciples who will be agents of transformation in the world. Let's now join God's servant, Reverend William Okoye, for today's message. I'm going to be sharing with us on the topic, loving God wholeheartedly. The number one commandment of all commandments is that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, in fact, in other um, scriptures, say with all your strength. In other words, God expects us to love Him wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly. That is the number one reason why God created us in His likeness and His image to live, to bring honor and glory to His name. To love him passionately. And he gave us a clear example of the way he meant for us to love him when he came down in the person of his son Jesus Christ to take our place on the cross of Calvary. The Bible said in John chapter 3, verse 16, first, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish or have everlasting life. Loving God wholeheartedly is clearly demonstrated in that act. That's why the Bible didn't just say God loved the world. It's enough, it's, it's grammatically correct to say that God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But to put so, it's a kind of showing us the magnitude of the love. And that is why we call it extravagant love. It is not easy to give when you have only one. If you have many, it's still difficult to give, but at least it's a little bit easier. But when you give your only, it shows that that's why the word so is there. He loved the word so much that he gave his only. And that is what it means to love God wholeheartedly. The Bible tells us in the book of John that greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. There's no greater love than that. And that is the kind of level that God wants us to express our love for him as creatures, especially as those of us who have come to know him as our Lord and personal Savior, who have benefited from his on a word sacrifice on the cross for our salvation. There are other examples of extravagant love in the Bible that I would like to uh, draw our attention to. Uh, Second Samuel chapter 23. I'd like us to read from Second Samuel chapter 23, verse 15 to 17. And David longed and said, Oh, that one will give me drink of the water of the well of, the, of Bethlehem, which is by the great. And the three mighty men break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink thereof, but poured it out unto the Lord. And he said, 
be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Is this not the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore he will not drink it. These things did these three mighty men. Now this is uh, an account of uh, some of the exploits done by uh, David's mighty men. These three mighty men who were soldiers in the army of David. The midst of the war that was raging, David expressed a desire to drink water from the well of Bethlehem where the enemy soldiers are camped. And because of the fierce loyalty, the fierce, uh, the extravagant love that these people had for David, they decided to go at the risk of their own lives to fetch water. Where the enemies, their enemies were, to fetch water to bring to their king to drink. When we say we love God, it's not just word of mouth or through word of, uh, word, word of mouth. It is, the, the Bible says by their fruits you shall know them. By their actions you shall know them. That is why Jesus Christ said that if you love me, what will you do? He said, keep my commandment. Because the, 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 you cannot love God just by word of mouth. It is by our actions that we show that we love God. When these three men went at the expense of their life to fetch water from the well of Bethlehem just because their king desired, expressed a desire to drink from that well, <laughs> when they brought the water, David shook and said, I cannot do this. Because drinking this water is drinking the blood of these three men who are risked their lives to get this water. Now, if human beings can do this because of their love for their king, for their earthly king, a human being like themselves, is there any price too great to pay to honor the king of kings and the lord of lords? Is there any price too great to pay? So if we say we love God, we are children of God and we truly love him, we can emulate these men. We can also see the example uh, uh, left to us by Jesus Christ himself. Or God himself said, for God so loved the world, he gave his only. That is the kind of love that God expects of us as his children to express, to demonstrate on a daily basis, especially as those who have benefited from his uh, unequal sacrifice that he made for the salvation of our souls. So he wants us to respond accordingly. I want to show you a scripture that has always fascinated me about Noah in the Bible. Let us look at Genesis. Genesis chapter 6, I'm going to read from verse 5 to 10 from the Living Bible. When the Lord saw the extent of human wickedness and that the trend and direction of men's lives were only towards evil, he was sorry he met them. He broke his heart. And he said, I will blot out from the face of the earth all mankind that I created. Yes, and the animals too, and the reptiles and the birds, for I am sorry I met them. Look at verse 8. But Noah was a pleasure to the Lord. Noah was what? But Noah was a pleasure to the Lord. Here is the story of Noah. He was the only truly righteous man living on earth at that time. He tried always to conduct his affairs according to God's will, and he had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. In the world of Noah's time, 
When men and women sold themselves to the devil and broke God's heart by their wickedness, the only person who stood out from the crowd was Noah. Hallelujah. Noah. And you know, when we talk of Adam and some people say we are children of Adam, I said, in a sense, but we are actually descendants of Noah. Because the first group of people that descended from Adam were all killed. They were all swept away by the flood. You remember? God started all, all, all over again with Noah. So we directly descended from Noah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Why was it that Noah was so highly favored? By God Because he was the only truly righteous man Living during his own time And that's what we are talking about Extravagant love Getting sold out to God Getting totally committed And totally surrendered to God That God can use you For his righteous purposes That is why I keep telling people no matter how far you think you've gone in the things of God, there's no graduation in Christianity. Shake the nearest person to you and say, there's no graduation in Christianity. No matter how far you have gone, you can go further. You can go further. The Bible said that those who thirst and hunger after righteousness shall continue to be filled by God. So the first and foremost uh, expression of God's uh, love or response to God's love is total abandonment, abandonment, uh, abandonment of your life to him. The second aspect of it is to totally commit yourself, totally yield yourself to God, to be used by God in every area of life. Put in all your resources, your time, your talents, every aspect of your life, putting it online, in the service of God and humanity. That's, that's what shows that you love God. That's what shows you love God. Amen? No, because people don't understand the meaning of life, and I've said time and time again that Nigeria's problem is not corruption as so, so many of us believe. The main problem of Nigeria is our distorted sense of value. Because we think that money is everything, we do all kinds of things just to get money. But when you understand the meaning of life, you understand that money is not everything. That we are here to serve our creator. That's the first and foremost reason why we are here. To honor God, to serve God, to fulfill the purpose of God for our life. And the second reason why we are here is to serve humanity. There's nothing created by God in all his creation that was created to benefit itself. Nothing. Trees were created by God not to benefit. If they bear fruit, who eats the fruit? Huh? Everything created by God was created to serve other people. Serve, not serve themselves. Amen. So when you understand that, you understand that you are created not for yourself. For your own benefit But for the benefit of other people Hallelujah We are created to worship God To serve God To glorify God And to be of benefit to others When you live that kind of life God takes care of every other thing concerning you So how much of our resources Are we putting at God's disposal If we say that we truly love God How much of our lives do we have Placed in the hands of God That's the beginning The second commandment as we read in that our text Is to love our neighbor As we love ourselves What does that mean? Simply put Treat others the way you want to be treated Amen? Amen? 
to love your neighbor as you love yourself. What is the interpretation of that? Treat other people the way you want to be treated. That's, that's the meaning of that. Do you know that in every major religion in the world, they have that in their book? I have it. I have them. Do you know that if we don't agree on any other thing in Nigeria as a people, and we all decide to treat others the way we want others to treat us, Nigeria will become heaven on earth. Am I correct? But the problem is that we are so religious, but still behave like devils. We are so religious, but we are not godly. I challenge us today to take the first commandment very seriously and make it the priority of our lives. And the second commandment, to love others the way we love ourselves. And our nation, our families, our churches, and the society will be blessed and be everything that God ordained for us to be. Shall we stand and pray? I believe God has touched your life through this message from his servant, Reverend William Okoye, the General Overseer of All Christians every Fellowship Mission. This message and several others of CDs, DVDs and books Jesus. by Reverend William Okoye are available at our church, number 2, Logoni Close, off Nile Street, before Maitama Police Station, Maitama Abuja. Get your copies now. For counseling and prayers, call 090 63478207. Number again, 090 For bookings and materials, call 081 5025 Once again, 081 5025 Or log on to www.acfmission.org. That is www.acfmission.org. Resource materials. Join our high impact worship service this Sunday at any of our branch churches nearest to you. Jesus saves, heals, and provides.